today I'm going to talk about an area that you can model, and that area is Milton, Ontario. For a town of roughly 100,000, Milton has a surprisingly large number of rail car served industries. While many cities and towns have seen a decline over the years with the decline of rail car serviced industries and the increase in more intermodal and container serviced industries, Milton has no less than eight, with two other that were serviced in recent years. So at one time, not too long ago, we had 10 industries serviced by rail cars. Even though Milton hosts both Canadian National and Canadian Pacific main lines, all these industries are serviced by CN. Sorry, CP fans. So let's get started. I'm going to follow the CN main line from south to north through Milton and will describe the industries along the way. The first is BJG Warehousing and Distribution Services. They are part of the Moore Group, which is made up of trucking companies, warehousing, etc. From the website, it wasn't clear to me what products are brought into this facility, but they receive large covered hoppers, four to five bay, which could be plastic pellets, powders, etc. It appears that they package it and ship it out in regular trucks. Now, before we get too far into the video, I want to stress that when you are doing this kind of research, be mindful and respectful of private property. Now, in the first picture, you can see a standard dry van being loaded out, which would indicate, as I said earlier, that they're packaging whatever material they're getting in and uh, loading out on uh, barrels or uh, packages on pallets. The subsequent photos show the spur from the CM main line with a gate, which you could also model, and the hopper cars themselves in the siding with hoses hooked up for unloading. Another picture from the other side of the tracks shows a loading door for boxcars, which will give you an option and some variety, although I have yet to see a boxcar in this siding. At the time of this photo, there were four covered hoppers in the siding. Now, in the last photo, this is Google Maps, and it's an overview uh, shot of the BJG warehousing. You can see there's the, uh, looks like they put an extension on over the, uh, period of time. There's the uh, gray roof building and I guess dark gray and light gray roof building. Um, where all you see those cars parked now is there's a whole bunch of uh, storage units in there. So that's since changed, but it's really not relevant with uh, regards to this uh, video. But for modeling purposes, you may want to put it in there. So you can see the spur off there and you can see a couple of hopper cars at the end of the spur, but the track goes a fair distance all the way to the bumper. After BJG, the rail line rises up onto a berm. This enables it to cross over bridges over Main Street, the CP Main Line, and Steeles Avenue before turning east. Shortly after turning east, a spur runs west off of the main line, goes down a grade, bringing the spur level with the area. The first picture is the spur coming around the corner from the CM Main Line and crossing Market Drive at grade. I am looking south in this photo. Turning around and facing north, I look to my right and see Keter Canada and Magna Carmax on the left. In these photos, you can see the Keter building and the sign at the entrance to Magna. Next is a photo of hopper cars in the Keter siding, large ones similar to the ones at BJG. Keter Canada manufactures and sells plastic furniture, so the cars will be bringing in plastic pellets. On the left, gondola cars are being loaded at the Magna plant with scrap metal. In the Google photo from overhead, you can get a better idea of, of the uh, aspect of this. So you can see four hopper cars in the Keter siding. In the Magna siding, there are three cars opposite the hopper cars loaded with scrap, five more empties near the top of the photo, and a trackmobile pushing another gondola into place for loading. Now in another Google photo, I've got a picture of one of the industries no longer serviced by rail, and it is Motatech Systems, another Magna plant that manufactures automotive frames. These days, that would mainly be pickup trucks and vans. They used to load the frames onto flat cars and ship them out. In the photo, you can see that they had three different tracks. Here's another Google photo, and you can see from the right part of the bottom of the map, you can see the darker line. That's the CM main line curving off towards the east and you can see some rail cars in part of the photo. And then you can see a light gray line coming off that main line. That's the spur I mentioned earlier. And then it goes around the corner and that's the photo I took. I was standing on Market Drive at the time. And that's 
you can just barely see Keter. So that gives you a better idea from overhead view of uh, how that spur runs off of the main line. Continuing along the CM main line, it curves to the left to face north. During this transition, as it is still actually going eastward, it crosses over Martin Street, or also known as Highway 25, and then drops back down to ground level before turning north. Once facing north, it meets up with the old CN line that used to run straight through Milton. There are two industries that run off of what used to be the old main line, Taiga Building Products and Crawford Metal Corp. The spur to Taiga curves east, crosses Magichi Road, and and then enters the Taiga property. Taiga is a lumber company and receives large quantity of lumber on center beam flat cars. The first photo is their office on Harrop Drive. My my review mirror here when I took the shot. The next pic is of the spur curving east off of the old, what was the old main line before crossing Magichi. So in this case, I'm actually facing west. Now I've pivoted to face east in the next photo showing a string of five or six empty center beam cars in the siding. The large industry in the background that you see is Rockwool Insulation Company, which surprisingly enough is not serviced by rail. Another photo from Harrop Drive looking west of the siding. So it's kind of from the opposite side and you can see a couple of cars in that picture as well. Next is a shot on Google Maps, an overhead view of the Tagus siding. As you can see, the area all around is paved, making it easy to get at both sides of the center beam flat cars. Here is a picture of the Crawford Metal Building. Unfortunately, I can't get any closer to it due to the fact that the, the roadway after that is private. In the Google Maps picture here, you can see the siding with a couple of gondolas to be loaded with metal. The track actually extends, as you can see, into the building. So I'm assuming that they have a trackmobile for moving the cars around as needed. And then finally, what I did is I zoomed out a bit on Google Maps so you can be, see both Crawford Metal and Taga. The Crawford Metal siding runs off of the switch off of the original main line, and then the spur continues south and then diverges off of the old right-of-way, curving east towards Taiga. Moving north, the main line goes underneath Highway 401. Just north of the highway, on the west side is West Rock, previously known as Rock 10, and previously to that, known as Smurfit MBI. So they've gone through some restructuring a few times. Um, they no longer have rail service, but going back a number of years, when it was still known as Smurfit MBI, they would receive boxcars, which hauled paper products for them. The only way I could show you the rail portion is from Google Maps. Looking at this picture, you can see the spur it's light gray in color. That was the ballast used as opposed to the darker ballast on the main line. And it curves off in towards the building. And the spur actually ran into the building where the cars were, uh, were offloaded. In this photo, I took a picture off of the James Snow Parkway overpass looking back south down the CM main line. And farther down, you could see the switch to Smurfit MBI or what is now West Rock off to the right. Moving further north, and just south of the James Snow Parkway overpass, is Whirlpool. So that is the same location where I took the picture of Smurfit MBI, the switch going into that facility. I also took pictures of the Whirlpool facility. Whirlpool is located east of the CN tracks, and in the series of photos, you can see the switch off of the main line and into the sheltered siding. Whirlpool brings in boxcars and appliances from various plants located in the U.S., the siding appears to be able to hold three to four boxcars, but of all the active online businesses in Milton, they seem to be the most intermittent. It may be more of a seasonal demand, because I do see boxcars in there on occasion. I also took a couple more pictures to the left, showing the size of the yard for the trailers, and to give you an idea of just how big the Whirlpool facility is. Now looking from overhead, you can once again see the siding in light gray as it leaves the main line, crosses a roadway that appears to connect the north and south portions of the warehouse, and then into the shed. Further along the line, on the west side, is Ricochem. They manufacture a variety of products, mostly liquids and fluids, uh, ranging from windshield washer fluid, diesel exhaust fluid for diesel trucks and cars, as well as various coolants. 
They are probably the busiest rail customer in Milton, receiving inbound tank chemical tank cars. I took a picture of their office slash facility, and to the left of the building, you can see some tank cars. Unfortunately, that was about as close as I could get from public property. So back to Google Maps. But first, I also took a picture north of the James Snow Parkway. And in that picture, you can just make out the switch going into Rico Cam, just the side of the whistle post, or I guess it's a whistle sign these days, and the end of the northbound freight train. Now back to Google Maps. From overhead, the spur curves off of the CM main line and into the Rico Chem facility. The spur splits into two tracks in order to handle the large volume of tank cars. I zoomed in the, for this shot so you could see the tank cars in a part of the facilities. At the time of this photo, there were 12 tank cars in the sidings. A busy place indeed. Last on the list is just next door to Rico Chem, Kimberly Clark. This is the other facility that is no longer serviced by rail. Like Smurf at MBI, I would suspect that they received inbound boxcars and paper products for distribution. From overhead, you can see the spur off of the main line curving parallel to the Rico Chem spur. As with the Smurf facility, it appears that the rail cars were unloaded inside the warehouse. So to recap, I'm going to just use um, the Google Maps here to walk through the entire uh, town of Milton with what we've discussed with all the industries. So we'll start in the uh, south end of Milton. And here you can see the railways crossing over Derry. And there's BJG Warehousing we talked about earlier. And you can see the spur going in there. Just give you an idea of the orientation here. We'll just follow the line. Actually, we'll zoom out again. You can see there basically, I may cover that in other videos. You can see the old line that used to go right through Milton, going by the old uh, uh, Robertson um, screwdriver plant that used to be there. And the line went right through the middle of Milton. And they built in the uh, early 60s, they built a diversionary line when they made the main, had the main line go through Milton instead of through Toronto. So the line curves around, goes over Steeles Avenue. And then you can see the spur going into here which we talked about as well. Keter Canada on the right, Magna Carmax on the left, and then the wood is now no longer in use, but then we've got the Magna Mototech systems as well, if you want to model that. Get back on the main line. The line crosses over Martin Street, or Highway 25. Curves back to join what was the original alignment of the, uh, the old line. And this is actually interesting enough, the um, Tiger uh, Lumber Company here, building products company, uses the original alignment of the old uh, line. It's called, basically it's now the Milton Spur and it curves around here and there you've got that. And you've got Crawford Metal right next to it basically. Line goes underneath the 401. Then there's the no longer in use, but what used to be Smurf at MBI, today is West Rock. Track coin in there. Then you got Whirlpool on this side. And then underneath James Snow. Then you've got Rico Chem up here as we continue north. Spur going in there with the two tracks we talked about earlier. And then lastly, which is no longer in use, but it's Kimberly Clark. So that's a brief. Uh, summary of all the industry all in a nutshell and if you were interested in uh me potentially doing another video with with a, a what, what could a, a train layout may look like i've got a couple of ideas and i could do that in another video so let me know and we can definitely look at doing that thank you for watching this video if you like what you saw and wish to see more content on model trains and real trains please subscribe to my channel